American security. Yes, sir. And walk me through what happened. Well, for the most part, um, the security team I was working with, the, uh, the details that they gave were we were backing up um, like the main contract, I mean, like the main NRG security and other security companies that they had. We were mostly the muscle, I guess you would call it, the enforcers. And um, it started off at the front gate, you know, when they opened up the gates and the fans got to come running in, it was like, it was so overwhelming that, you know, they tried to stampede through like eight times, eight different times. At the, at the first incident that they tried to stampede through, I wasn't there. Um, they had relocated me at, around the festival, but I got a call from my uncle who would cope, like who, um, he, uh, me and him kind of like, carpool together he didn't he don't do security he actually heard about the job through me so i brought him along with me at the first wave of people that stormed in um like trampled all the security my uncle broke his hand actually and that's that was the call i received so i ran over to get over there they had it all handled or whatever after that one it, it kept coming it kept coming like eight or eight or nine times literally eight or nine times they did not stop trying to come in 3,000 to 1,000 to 3,000 people at a time. HPD was right there on the site. It's like they wanted us to police it, you know? Like they didn't want to jump in and stop anybody. I don't know if they had HPD hired for the concert or not. So like a lot of the rough handling of the fans was okay, but they wanted it to be okay, you know? And the rough handling wouldn't have to went on, you know? If it, I feel like it could have been avoided. I feel like it could have been avoided. I seen a few fans that was like saying in the comments that it could have been avoided also, which it could have. What they, What do you think could have been done differently? What I think I could have been, it could have been organized better. You know, I really feel like it was set up for the people to run through. It seemed like it, and with us being like on the front front, front line like that, we were like thrown in the line of fire in the danger, and a lot of people got trampled. That was like uh, most of the ticket. Handlers were college students and high school students. So it was like smaller girls and smaller guys that didn't have much body or anything. And they were like, they were like getting tackled, getting ran over, getting trampled into the fence. But that was the crazy part, you know, that was overwhelming. Dealing with a lot, that made the job kind of what the job was. The, the, the more scary part, the crazier part was the, because me and my uncle was more of the, hands-on guys, they picked us for transporting, uh, escorting the artists. So they took us to the concert part. Before the concert even got started, Travis Scott did like a countdown on the screen. Um, it was like a 30 minute countdown. During the countdown, we're in the, it was a cross like this, that was like barricaded aisles for the security guards to pull people out of the crowd into the cross so they can get out of the barricades. Um, most people was out of breath and sweating, and you could see that all through the countdown. You could see that it was coming, all the fainting, and all you could see it was coming. So I was always asking people, like, are you okay? You don't want me to help you get out of there? And they was like, no, 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 I want to see Travis. I want to see Travis. And some people back, so turned to the stage, and they're so tight along the barricade where so they can't even turn around or pick a hand up to see the to see the screen, you know, and I was like, I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is my first time ever been to a concert, period. So this was so, your first time at a concert ever. and you're doing security. Ever, and I was working it, so. And I, I mean, respective, respectively, did, did you know what you were doing? I, I mean, for the most part, see, I'm, I'm trying to get into being the bodyguard. I got to get a little more meat on my bones. But I'm trying to, so I, I did my homework. I know the ins and outs of securing. I'm, I'm really just supposed to observe and report as a security officer. The, the hands-on and the roof handling really was the new part to me, you know? And see me, I'm I'm a big-hearted person, so it's kind of hard for me to put my hands on a stranger and hurt him, you know? So I was trying to be lean, light, well, with it, but you may see me on other clips kind of slanging people because they were slanging us and they were stepping on us and some bigger security guards got stepped on. But so the, were you there when that stampede happened at the I end was of it? And I what happened? Where were you then? What did you see? I was right at the gates. I was right at the gates. I was like one of the first people at the gates. They made ABC 13. I was right there at the gates. They ran over the first set of security guards they had. See, the, the NRG had a set of security team who seemed like people that probably went through a temp service or something because they wasn't like 
the profile of security it was a lot of women. It was a lot of older, you know, people that was working with them. So I can imagine when the step aid did come, it was nothing they really could do to, you know, probably but get out the way. And some did, some got trampled. And like I said, that was overwhelming, but the people were fainting and us pulling them out, it was literally people in the crowd that we could not get to. I remember like people yelling to me, getting my attention and telling me, it's four or five people fainting right here on the ground. And I can't jump in there because they won't allow me to jump in there and go help them. At the time of him telling me this, it's a video right now on some blogs of a guy in a red shirt. He was one of the victims that passed away. I literally seen this guy take his last breath. I seen four or well, three police officers, two red shirt medics, probably five people go to and do compressions and, you know, just to try to bring him back, steady pumping his chest and see me, I've never been I've never been in the heat of the moment. I never seen death. I never seen it, you know. So it was really like trying to meet, stay in that security mode and, you know, not react to the moment. I was trying not to let the concert take me off because I was trying to pay attention to these people. It was so much going on. It literally is people, girls that's not even five foot behind that barricade. That barricade, I have some video of the owl. That barricade is probably, probably was five feet, probably, because if you 411, those people's heads were stuck up against the barrier. You see, like, you see their face turning red. You see the color changing. You see it. You, you see saw it. that happening. You see it. You've seen that before the show got Did started. Did you see people die? That guy died. Uh, another crazy part was I got, I caught two people that was crowd, being crowd surfed. And I appreciate the fans for that. They crowd surfed him to me and he fell in my arms. And I didn't know if he was alive or not. Uh, I just knew to take off to the medics, and that's what I did, you know. And uh, they was like, lay him on the ground. As soon as I laid him on the ground, uh, it triggered something because he went into like seizing. He went to like a little seizure mode or whatever. And that right there really almost took me out of there. I really wanted to leave right then, but um, I had been told that if we leave or if we did anything wrong, uh, we wouldn't get paid for the day. How much were they paying you? Um, I, see, I'm a worker. I'm the type of guy where if I know it's easy to get the job, I'm going to go work first before I even ask what I'm getting paid. Um, they had mentioned $17 an hour through a text message from a friend of mine, a peer of mine, who wasn't working with them. When I got there, some of their workers were telling me they were from out of town, they were from Virginia. Virginia, they had been telling me $25, $30 an hour, bodyguard uh, wages or whatever. And um, I really didn't care. You know, I really didn't care. I was, I really was trying to enjoy the job. And I also was trying to show myself, like, so I can probably get a permanent position with those guys. Uh, do, you, do you think there were enough police officers there? I do. You do? I do. That's the crazy part. I do. I think it was well over enough police officers. Like I said, I don't know how the contracts work with security and them hiring HPD, and I don't know if HPD was hired or if they were just there because of the calls, the volume of calls, because uh, HPD was there from the start. Do you think Do you think there were enough security officers there? I think it was enough security officers. I just don't believe that they took the right, you know, route of hiring security. You know? What do you mean by that? Um, it was freelancers. It wasn't people that was used to securing nothing. Well, you're saying you got the job through a text I'm message. I got the job through a text message. When I got there, I knew it was like a temp service type of situation because they had a line of like 200 people. And all of these people that's in this 200, line of 200, were for just the company that I worked for, you know? And we seeing other companies, you know, that have teams of at least two to 300 security, you know? So we backing up other big teams. As soon as I seen that, uh, the people that I was working for called out like they big guys, they enforcers. And I tapped my uncle. See, I really, I'm, I'm, I've been in Houston a long time. Houston, you know, we, we, we're overpopulated, so we got a lot of temp service jobs where first come, first serve. And if you're on the scene, you know, at the right time and you got the right, and you right type of person, you can get the job, you know? So when they did that, I, I'm kind of bigger myself, so I blended in. They never said anything. Um, but for the most part, those 200 people were just like, just threw in at anywhere. Do they have any qualifications? I doubt it because I didn't show anything. You didn't show anything? I didn't, I didn't even show my ID. And you were in there as a security guard? Yeah, as a security guard. Did you have a uniform? I had a uniform. They gave us vests. I was already in this all black. I was already in all so black. So wait, so you show up, they don't ask for your ID, 
they don't ask for any certification, and they just hand you the uniform, they and then you go. They a phone number. But see, that's, they know they, your name. They know my name. We wrote our name on like a sign and shit. But that goes to show, like the you know, like I said, the like the way they took with hiring those people. They probably threw those contracts out there. Those teams, like I said, the team that I was on, I was the only one from Houston. So, I mean, respectfully, do you feel like you were qualified for this situation? Um, I do. I don't believe I was prepared. You don't think you were prepared? I was qualified because I believe that if we were all prepared the right way, that stuff wouldn't have happened the way it did, you know, the way it did. And honestly, even though, even the people, the amount of people that passed and went on conscience, you know, the amount of injuries could have been avoided. I really, really do believe it because the way they had the thing got the the whole festival sectioned off. The way they had to say they had it like it was, it could have been you know it could have been controlled. Who do you blame for this? I don't blame Travis Scott. Um, I see a lot of counsel Travis Scott situation. I don't blame the artist. He did try to stop the show, and I do believe if he would have stopped it completely, it would have been worse. So who do you so blame? I don't blame him. Um, whoever is the organizers. I blame the people that you don't see, you know, whoever put the barricades together, whoever idea that was, you know, like, I believe, I blame them. I blame the people that was allowing that many people to even bunch up in the front like that. And, I, and it was reminding me of like noodles popping out of like a spaghetti bowl. Like, you know, it was, they, they were that tight. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.